Hello, hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Renzo here. Oh, hello, uh, Cheryl. Hello, Bob. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Bob. Uh, drink water. Hello, Jonas. Hello, Jim. Hello, Anna. Hello, Michael. Sorry, a couple of names, names that I don't know how to pronounce. Hi, everybody. Okay, like just the way that uh, I've been painting lately, I'm gonna start painting the skull and then I'm gonna paint half of the face and then the other half. Okay, that was nice, that was a really nice challenge for me. Kind of a tough challenge, but I, you know, it was a lot of fun the last time. Uh, let me see, I'm moving things here on my screen, I got the photograph here, I got this uh, couple of photographs, okay, let's see, first, I'm going to start sketching just with uh, vine charcoal, or widow charcoal, any one of those is going to be okay, okay, I have it here. Let's see, this is going to be my space for mixing the colors. I use for new people here, welcome, and you know, I use a canvas and I tone this canvas with acrylic, just a layer of, just gray, kind of transparent. You know, the original color of my canvas is kind of a little bit like a really light yellow ochre. Uh, here's going to be the top. Let's see if I place the face here, top, bottom, a little bit smaller, okay, there, let me adjust my the photograph on my computer, yeah, that's okay, here's gonna be the top, here's gonna be the bottom, okay, eyebrows, nose, and mouth, and just, I'm checking on the proportions, okay, we all should know by heart for example this, you know, from the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose is the same distance from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. Okay, that's, uh, that's something that is going to help us with the construction of the face. Now, obviously, uh, we need to move those measurements as soon as we, you know, try to get the likeness. Okay, hello, experience history. Uh, Hello Anna, hello Michael, hello Eric, hello Abdul, hello Dora, okay, uh, hello Oya Oya, okay, hello Alban, uh, Alban is saying hello greetings from UK, okay, nice, hello Mirella, I'm going live on YouTube and on my uh, Facebook page okay obviously the name of my fa Facebook page is Renzo Art okay let's see now I uh, got the center line of the face you know between the eyes usually there is one eye we're gonna split this portion in three and we sit the eyes we sit the eyes on top of this line we split this portion in two and we sit the mouth on top of this line. Okay. Those are things that we should know by memory. Okay, let's see. About the skull. One thing that uh you know I love to try to find some alignments when I draw the skull. For example, I got the eyebrow, okay, and the bottom of the nose. Okay, I split this in two. Okay, that's gonna be my measurement to place the one eye socket here and one eye socket here and when I place the eye socket I love to think about these glasses like a, uh, just glasses for the sunlight just in this shape you know like you know the glasses are just tilted like that okay now another thing Here's going to be the nasal bone. Okay. 
One thing I do first, I look for the alignment between the tip of here, this portion of the nasal bone, and the bottom of the eye socket. I mean, if you see any furrow, any skull, you're not gonna find the alignment. That's my first thing I do. Then I move this tip a little bit up, and then I move this a little bit down. Okay, because it's not a perfect, a perfect alignment. But I gotta start with something, and then from there I move, you know, the measurement. Okay, hello, uh, Charles from New York. Hello, Fred from Brazil. Well, hello, Mohamed, hello, Garu. Hello, Marius. Hello, Natalie from France. Uh, Shelby from France. Hello, Mohamed. Okay. Pretty nice to have people from everywhere. Hello, Mohamed Bendari. Okay. Mohamed from Iran. Okay, pretty nice. Uh, 58 people is watching, that's pretty good. But you, I just see 22 likes. What's happening here? <laughs> Press the like button. <laughs> Okay. I got, you know, the eye sockets. Okay. The nose, the nasal bone here. I have, I'm gonna draw the maxilla. And the mandible. The maxilla is this upper portion, and the mandible is this lower portion. And we have the teeth here. Okay. And here, this bone that's pretty important, okay, this is the cheekbone, the zygomatic bone. It's aligned with the bottom of the nose. Okay. Every time that we paint, we draw, we paint anyone, we wanna notice a shadow here. It's a little bit of a depression. Okay, when uh, people is, uh, let's say, you see somebody that's kind of a skinny guy or woman, you're gonna see that it's pretty pronounced, this shadow here. That's indication of the psychomatic bone. Okay. To study more about this, I always recommend to buy a skull. You know, there's some many plastic skulls in any art store and you can use you know the, the links on my description box you can find a link to Amazon you get into Amazon and you look for anything and you buy anything from those links I'm gonna get a commission okay. and you know what I love getting commissions <laughs> uh, hello Mo Mohammed from the Cairo thank you Shelby from Egypt. Well, wow. hello Anna. Okay, I got the skull here. Mm. Okay. Now oh, the cranium. One thing that one measure one measure that we always gotta consider the eyes. You know we're gonna place the eyes here. The eye one eyeball here, one eyeball here. That means that the iris is gonna be around here and around here okay you can take this as a reference to have the cranium you know the eyes are halfway from the top of the head to the bottom that means that we can repeat this measurement and get the top of the cranium okay let me check out the photograph yeah Okay, <laughs> and it looks kind of funny. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna go with a little bit of paint. Let's pick up. Uh, usually, for this uh, drawing with a little bit of paint, I usually pick up a brush. You see, this is pretty stiff. I didn't watch this brush for a long time. 
but wait, I'm just going to adjust the tip. Okay, that's going to be enough for me to draw. I don't want to add too much paint. Look at the shape of the eye sockets. For me, for example, uh, uh, I know how to draw the skull by memory. And one thing that helped me a lot when I was about drawing the eye sockets it was what I told you before, you know, try to think that these are just sunglasses, okay? Because they are tilted, tilted down a little bit. Here, I cannot paint too many details, you know. I'm planning to try to finish up this painting in three hours. Another way to practice this, and I mentioned that in previous videos, is draw the skull on top of photograph. As a practice, what I used to do is get some, you know, buy some magazines and draw on top of the magazines, the skull, and uh, the, the, all the whole, uh, you know, skeleton, as we say, yeah, the whole body on top of, you know, the bones, all the bones on top of each photograph. That, w that was a really good practice when it's about practicing anatomy. The maxilla. Now I'm going to paint just half of the face. Okay. Eye socket, you know, cheekbone, nasal bone is here. Maxilla, all this area here. You know, psychomatic bone and mandible. Okay. There is a little bone here, this tiny bit on the base of the nose, it's called vomer. Okay, just here, we can touch it, if we pressure, you know, we can touch this bone, if we pressure it, our hand is, you know, just below the eye. Okay, now let's think about painting. Okay, the good thing you know that helps what uh, uh, is that the skull, the skull is the same for everybody, okay, and that's a good uh, help, that's a good help when it's about uh, adding highlights to the face, because usually the highlights are on the same areas, and it has to do a lot, a lot with the skull, with bone. Hello, Mr. Goods from Ohio. Hello Sharon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some uh, share be saying the skull is funny when we see someone very beautiful it's different to imagine his skeleton. <laughs> okay. Hello Anna. Hello Karen. No, everybody is free to ask me any question about painting, about materials, about, you know, anything. Okay. Now, let's see. I'm going to start painting this half of the face, okay? Now, I gotta, oh, first I'm going to place, just uh, try to place the iris. The eyeballs are here. Iris, one iris here, the other iris here. Okay, now I'm squinting down my eyes, uh, I'm trying to see light and shadows, there is not too much contrast on this photograph, but I love the photograph, I mean it's more like because of the beauty, you know, of uh, the character, I don't remember her name, oh my god, I got the name, I forgot the name, sorry, obviously she's an actress, uh, 
uh, let's see on top of this area here we place the eyebrows okay yeah I'm gonna start mixing some colors uh, what do you think I should start with left or right yeah, let's start with the left okay I'm gonna mix orange white and I knock down this color with raw amber I didn't mention the colors okay I'm just gonna go over them this is titanium white cadmium yellow cadmium orange cadmium red permanent alizarin crimson raw amber cobalt blue and ivory black I keep using kind of the same colors for, for a long time okay Hello Eric Whitman, the sunglasses eyes are tilted. Is that just for this drawing or every drawing? Oh no, for every drawing, every time they draw a skull, that's, that was something that, you know, I was trying to, when I, that, that comes from when I was a student, when, by, we, we, I mean, with my friends, we used to try to draw by memory, you know, the human body, the skull. And I couldn't remember all the time the position of the, you know. It, uh, for me, it was like drawing something like this, the eye sockets. It was just like that. Or just two circles, you know. And one day I saw those sunglasses, like, on the movie, I think, an old, an old movie. Huge sunglasses like that. Yeah? And uh, I thought, oh, wow, that looks like, you know, the eye sockets on the scar. And I used that. That helps me to remember every time. Okay, I got one color here. It's kind of a gray down color, gray down orangey color. Okay, I'm painting just the light. Just light. If we see the photograph on the screen, obviously we can notice there's a light here. Okay, like a light here. We know, you know why we see the light here. We see the eyebrow and we notice that this is kind of a bump here. Okay, that's the eye socket. It's just in the limit, on top of the eye socket, the upper portion of the eye socket. Okay. I'm just using one color because uh, I prefer always simplify things when it's about drawing, you know, I prefer using st straight lines when it's about color, just one color, two colors, you know, it just, uh, I see, you know, variation of the skin, green, red, that I'm going to go over that as soon as I established at least two values. One that represents the lights and the other one that represents the shadows. Mohamed is asking me, are you using the board to paint on? No. Uh, is this canvas? A canvas. Uh, Mohamed is a question. Oh, that's the same question. Yeah, canvas. Shelby is telling me, your way of drawing portrait is easier than some other methods. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's continue. Uh, let's see, let's see. Mm, okay. I'm squinting down my eyes and just trying to see just lights. Okay, that was just with one color, one value. Obviously, that's a light value I'm gonna pick up a different brush I'm gonna mix here a darker value just the same orange white and raw amber there is so many ways to paint you know to mix the skin color but one thing for sure that uh, 
I mean, that's, but you know, we, we, this is about just painting on the prima, you know. The, the prima means just in one session. Uh, I tried to get closer to the colors, but uh, I'm not so worried, worried mixing, like trying to match the exact color. It's, it's more about, it's always more about matching the values first. And then I can just, you know, try to match color. If I don't get it, that's okay. But as soon as I see the face and I see, I recognize a human face and a skin color that looks natural, that's going to be okay for me. You know, sometimes I, I match the skin colors on the photograph. But I got to tell you that I'm not so worried about that. Maybe I should be. Maybe one, yeah, maybe I should. I think I should, but. You know, but not when I paint here, you know, in one, just one session. You know, what I'm always worried about or I, f I fo focus about is getting the likeness, you know. But it doesn't mean like uh, if someday you see that I don't get the likeness. There's so many times I don't get the likeness. You know, it was because just it was so difficult to get. But I always try. I always try really hard. With more time, definitely I will try to get the best of each painting, you know, in terms of values, color, and likeness. I'm squinting down my eyes and trying to just, you know, see values when we screen down our eyes we don't see the tears okay I need a new brush I'm already saying that lots of magic way to paint and teach us, even if for me it seems difficult being just a beginner. Thank you, they are may, uh, very helpful for me. Your lessons, greetings from Romania. Thank you, Mireida. Uh, thank you, Moncho. Are these water soluble oil? No, no, just regular oil paints. more orange on my palette. I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of videos on my channel. Uh, uh, you're gonna find at least five that I painted with. Uh, what a mix of all your paint. Uh, and you're gonna find at least maybe 10 or maybe more than 10. I don't remember that I have worked with pastels. Man, just the pastels or the acrylic with acrylics too. I have some portraits with acrylics. Stepping back, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to. I have the brushes here on a table, little table that I have here. One, two, three brushes. Let's go back to this one. Okay. Then to this one. Here, uh, let me see. Mm, oh, the mouth.
I just I'm gonna use just raw umber. A little bit of linseed oil. I have the photograph to my left, same same size of, as my painting. That makes things easier when it's about, for example, to place the top of the head here. You know, I got the photograph pretty close. And the same for here. I don't use too much linseed oil. I mean, basically for just the background and hair, and when I, when I want to spread painting really fast. down my eyes mm, okay I got three values on the face you know light mid-tone and shadow I got the darker value for the hair okay hello XX clear history saying one day we will see the person he's painting will start walking out of his of this canvas <laughs> yeah. Okay, hello Charlie. What type of canvas are you using? Oh, I prepare my own canvases. I just bought, I used to buy just the raw, uh, uh, this is cotton, raw cut, cotton, and I fo add four layers of gesso. Do you use sometimes carmine for alizarin or alizarin crimson? I usually I use, I mean, always I use alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson. Hello Sylvia. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Karen. Okay, I'm going to pick up a tiny, a little, a tiny brush, pointy brush. One second. Liner brush, double zero. I'm mixing raw umber with a little bit of cadmium red, and I'm gonna use it, use it to draw. Okay. I'm using this just as a pencil. Okay. See the nose. the mouth there are a few things that I, I do with my left hand but because you know it's not on the camera obviously nobody sees but it's just about measuring okay I got I usually I hold the brush with my left left hand let's see if, uh, on the photograph I do this you know I put it on the photograph and I look for an alignment let's say that the tear duct here is aligned with the corner of the mouth uh, it's not you know but let's say if I see that I know that's something I'm gonna use and then I'll check uh, on that uh, during the whole process because you know we, we add paint 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 and if somebody starts with a really tight drawing at some point we you know we lost the drawing because of the amount of pain, is, things start to move. Uh, hello, Frank. Thank you. Hello, Molly from Bulgaria. Wow, that's very nice. Uh, okay. 
Silver is saying I didn't receive your notification. Is this normal? Oh, uh, oh uh, no. Uh, yeah. Maybe I uh, know it's a YouTube thing. That, yeah, I yeah, know. Uh, Michael saying it's half price for half a painting. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do commissions like that. Just you know. I'm gonna paint half of your face and half of your kind of uh, inner inner face, your skull. <laughs> yeah. That's it's pretty funny. Oh, that was a question about uh, what a mix of oil paints. Yeah, I think they just ninety percent, you know, like regular oil paints. Yeah, uh, I notice the difference when I use water, but if I don't use water with water, water mix and mold, it's just like, yes, a hundred percent, just like regular oil paint. And you know that I don't, I don't use uh, basically on the face. Uh, I don't use any any medium. Okay, just oil paint. Uh, when uh, another thing that there are some with water mix up oil paints, there are some mediums that I think they're pretty nice. I think I don't know, just for people that told me that. Yeah. The, the thing is that any material uh, is, let's say, that. We're gonna experience some difficulty with any material until we got used to, until we get used to them. That okay, that's gonna be it's, it's, it's the same for everything. If you've been painting with oil paints and then you're trying to switch to acrylics, you're gonna feel the difference. You need to get used to you know the texture, how thick or thin is the oil paint or the acrylic. Is the same for when when we work, for example, from oil paint to watercolor. Okay, uh, uh, when we are beginners, we, we need to understand that a lot of the problems that happens are because, uh, are, uh, because we are not used to, you know, the texture or the thickness of the material. And another thing, the surface that we're painting on, we gotta be careful with that because it's just like 90, 99 percent of problems is because of the surface. I have seen so many people always trying, yeah, saying, "Hey, oil paint is just horrible. Look at that, you know, it doesn't flow. It's just, it's, and it was always about the canvas." Louis, Louis, much. Thank you, Louis. Saying hi from Florida. Continue getting some of the likeness. Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue, black, and white. Let's see the eye here. Squinting down my eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we got a copy, obviously, the position of the eye, the size of the iris, the shape of the white of the eye, the shape of the eye, and values, okay? That's why I keep always squinting down my eyes. For example, here, let's say that I got the position of the eye. I don't know if that's okay. Something that that I gotta do is, you know, copy values. Right now, I notice that it's pretty dark here, and it's not that dark 
on my painting. gonna blend for blending I use a round brush skin color. I'm gonna add a little bit of red here, and white, a little bit of orange, and I'm gonna add more color here. You know, there are some reddish areas on the face that are gonna be the, are gonna be the same all the time. I burn lower eyelid, cheek, nose, and chin. Sylvie's asking me, do you prefer standard oil paint? Yeah. Uh, it's when, uh, I don't know, I mean, just, uh, you know, if, if somebody just handed me just the oils like this, you know, and I start painting, I wouldn't even notice that if it's what a mix of oil paints or regular oil paints. You know, maybe I shouldn't say that I prefer regular oil paint since it's let's see it's not possible to notice the difference hello albino uh mohammed is asking me about the smell of oil uh, or uh, mixable oil paints uh to be honest uh, uh yeah okay oh oh something i remember now yeah okay first okay first one thing okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna add just a lights here on the face. Okay, something that's pretty nice, for example, that I could, I could tell about what a mix of oil paint is about the cleaning. It's about the cleaning, just, you know, you just use water and that's pretty good. And the brushes are pretty good for the next session. With oil paints, you, you, you need uh, some something stronger, obviously like terpenoid or terpenoid that you buy on the hardware store yeah. and on top of that you need to wash the brushes with soap yeah. I'm blending a little bit There is always shadow here on the base of the nose. Mm -hmm. 
in obviously a cast shadow Work on the eye. Let's see, she has blue eyes. Mm. Okay. Michael is asking me if I still use Winton. Yeah, I still use Winton. Winston is the student ver version, the student grade of Winsor and Newton. Garou George. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, Garou. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, what a mix of oil paints needs um, a medium for glazing. Yeah, but this is not uh, what a mix of oil paints, okay? These are regular oil, oil paints. Uh, look at uh, from my. If somebody likes, you know, we can look for my videos on. Look for the name. Usually, I put the name pretty, pretty big uh, on the screen. Or at the beginning, you know, on the description box. It says what a mix of oil paints. But I don't think that nobody could, could tell, could notice the difference. Since I don't use too much solvent. I don't use water, I don't use linseed oil. No, this makes things kind of difficult to distinguish between one or the other. A little bit of light here. See if I can get this eye. Mm, I'm squinting down my eyes, trying to copy the shape of the eye. Mm. I need a highlight. I want the highlights on the iris. I need to work on the mouth, yeah, I think something about 
her mouth that's gonna help me with expression. Okay, I need green here. I'm gonna add chrome green here. Okay, there are some greenish areas on the face. Green and raw umber and white. Okay, for example here. Get a bit of cover blue. For example, here, well, that's too dark. Okay, I'm gonna use with a lot of white, just gonna add a little bit of a highlight here, and with white and yellow, highlight too. Okay, I have a greenish highlight. Okay, now pink and orange here. orange and red here just to add more color to the shadow a little bit of saturation okay orange and this first color just to add a little bit of light here more orange and just adding a little bit of saturation okay of orangey color here I want to keep a little bit of this light green that is there Getting closer little by little. Okay, I need this green again. It's just white and 
chrome green. Uh, I got a question here. Uh, oh, okay. If your canvas was white, would you say you'll need to use more paint? Yeah, for yeah, for the dark, for the shadows. Yeah, definitely for the shadows. I prefer a mid-tone. Uh, I and I, I have experienced that. You know, we usually put more paint on, on, on the light, lighter areas because it's just like that. You know, we add more and more paint. But when you paint your canvas is white, obviously uh, the oil paint is a little bit transparent. That's gonna help. A white canvas that's gonna help with the lights. Yeah, definitely. But uh, when it's about the shadows, you gonna you gonna see that it's just like they are not dark enough. And you, you know, end up adding more and more paint. Yeah. But it's it's not like, uh, you know. At the end, we get away with a paint. I have painted a lot on white canvases. I just nowadays I prefer a gray canvas. I think I can move from a gray canvas applying the light and the shadows and as soon as I lay down a lighter color on a gray canvas I see just like light when I, I add uh, the light color on a white canvas definitely uh, I don't see that color as, as bright because there's nothing more you know on the canvas and the white of the canvas that's going to be always the lighter color but you know it's not a big deal it's just what you think it works for you for anyone? What time is it? I wanted to paint an hour on the half of the face, another hour on the, ha the other half of the face, and then uh, obviously working on the whole face. Okay, squint it down my eyes. Mm -hmm. Comparing, comparing. Mm -hmm. to darken up here. Darken up here. I think the shadows here are, are the key for to get hair expression. make her eyebrow more pointy here. Yep.
What do you think about half of the face? But uh, what kind of blue is, is uh, this? It's cobalt blue. Uh, shall we see in a, uh, oh. uh, Why greenish shades are more used than blues in portraits? No, no, it depends on the light. It depends. You want to cool down the, 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 high, the lights, highlights. We use blue, we could use, you know, in this case I use a little bit of green. It's just a tiny green, it's just to create more color. Uh, oh, I, ha I have here a little bit of a greenish color, green greenish light. And here is an orangey and pinky. Okay, that add more color to that area. It that is better than just using, you know, a layer version of the skin color I have here. Michael is saying, remember and hit the like button. Yeah. Um, what about mustard colored background? That could be. Jenny is a very useful exercise. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Are you painting flat or, or is it your canvas or an easel? It's on an easel. Uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Just thinking. Just thinking, okay. Just trying to compare. I think I got uh, something up on the face. Uh, Mm. Yeah, what about the background? Kind of I like this background. What about if I make it maybe orange? Maybe more bluish? Uh, don't know, don't know, don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's not like one one is going to work better than the other, you know. Both backgrounds are going to work. It's just what I want, maybe with... Maybe I want to, you know, add more color to the whole painting. I can just a more saturate the color. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, would, I, 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 I see her face, and I feel like I would love to uh, see something pretty, pretty powerful here. Something pretty po uh, colorful. I don't know, I don't know, I feel that. Yeah. Even that she has a kind of a sweet eyes. No, uh, for example, you see the or if you paint on a white canvas, this orange, you would see this orange pretty powerful, pretty bright because it's on a white canvas. Now, what you see here is orange and the transparency of this 
color and what's the color here gray it's just that you mix gray and orange if we want to see this really powerful I'm gonna go thicker with paint really thick to see for real the orange okay now the advantage for me for example working on a gray canvas is I can control that you know I lay down orange uh, make it thinner it's just like mixing orange with gray just by just by thinning down paint okay um, what about that color? I don't know. I like it, you know. I like it a lot. Oh, oh I need more orange on my palette. Uh, but let's see, you know, I like it right now, but what's gonna be if when I paint this half of the face and I got more background here? Maybe it's not gonna work there. Anyway, if that one doesn't work, I just, I'm gonna change it, yeah? No big deal. See, if it's asking me what kind of easel do you use? Uh, I got this kind of tiny easel. Uh, hello, uh, SG. Yeah, ask me a question. Uh, there's a pretty tiny e easel that uh, uh, it just maybe just the ca the only thing that fits on that easel is just the canvas, and that's it. No more. And obviously, this and uh, this table there, I have to, the same table. Uh, the easel and next to the easel my the monitor okay I have changed my setup a little bit but when I was I usually I was working on a bigger easel and I got the monitor in on a table okay. I changed that a little bit it's, it's not just I, I had to I had to change it uh, it's not better than before it's the same Mm. Squinting down my eyes. A touch of yellow. Can you see a little bit of the yellow? Maybe it's not that visible because it's pretty subtle. I'm gonna zoom in if. Can you all notice a little bit of a yellow green on top of that? A little bit of green, this green here. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a little bit of orange here. Okay, I, I have to light up those colors. I just wanted to show you, you know, that sometimes it's just about adding one color and sometimes it's just we need more colors too. To create more color in that area. Okay. Now, it's up to anyone how much color we add because we can just end up with a really colorful painting, but just subtle variations. Okay. Right now, I'm taking a little bit of time just to check out the likeness, okay? I don't want to move to the other side of the face. Obviously, uh, it's not about getting this half of the face perfect. No way. There's no way about that. But I'm just checking proportions, I'm checking lights and shadows, I'm checking the, mostly the shape of the eye. move to the other side of the face you know if you like what you see what you watch press the like button uh, how do you decide when you, you, you want to use a lizard crimson or cadmium red yeah uh, when I want darker uh, saturated colors like for a shadow on the, on the skin like for the nostrils I use a lizard crimson 
Uh, and when I want more, like, uh, I want to light up the color, you know, it just, for example, I have here, the Lisa Crimson and Raw Umber. Okay, it's a really dark red, uh, but nobody's able to see the color. To see a color like this, we need to add a little bit of white. And then we see, you see? Yeah, it's kind of uh, vi violet. Okay, when I add coming red, that turns on a more saturated color. A little bit lighter and saturated, and that's, that's the reason that it's not like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use just one, you know, for here, the nostril, I can use more of this, just a listening crimson and raw umber, just here, and add coming red, and I go on the shadow, for example, this one, that I don't want to make it darker, but I want that shadow to be saturated. You know, I don't want a brown shadow without any, any saturation on, on the color at all, no. Okay, let's paint the other half of the face. It's been an hour, yeah, an hour and six minutes, minutes. Yeah. Okay. Exploring history, saying, what about doing a life-size full portrait? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna do the same if I paint a bigger portrait. Uh, it's not. It's not about the the, the size yeah, uh, that I'm gonna change. You know, I'm gonna change this. Uh, just one second. Okay, I'm gonna paint the other half of the face. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start with the eye. Okay, I'm checking the lightning between one the one eye and the other. I'm checking I visually measure the distance from one eye to the other eye. Okay, I'm checking, for example, an angle that usually is a 45 degree angle between the part of the nose here okay. and the corner of the eye and the corner of the eyebrow. Okay. Paint the light on the face. I'm gonna go back to just orange, raw umber, and white. Okay. Uh, is G saying? Does temperature has to do anything with it? Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, if you don't see that, you know, the light on the face is yellowish. You're dealing basically with a neutral color or a cool color. You know, a light green is a green, a cool color. It works pretty good here, you know. But it's not just about that, it's uh, about contrast. And I love for example, to use what is called the si simultaneous contrast. Okay. And uh, that means that when you add opposite colors, 
in temperature, temperature or uh, or opposite colors of the color wheel, okay, together in a small area, you're gonna get some vibrant vibration there. That's gonna enhance the color. That means that small area that's gonna look a little bit colorful, but not necessarily because you got saturated colors there. It's just because you got those colors, those opposite opposite colors next to each other, and they share something in common. You know, value. They have the same value. They have the same lightness or darkness. Okay. Mixing cadmium orange, raw umber, and cadmium uh, and white. If I paint this half of the face with a lot of paint, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no, that would be fun. That would be fun for me, but uh, I would need more time for to get away with this. When I draw here, I paint and I draw at the same time. Look at this. Can you see a triangle here? Okay, that's what I'm trying to copy. Okay, I see how tilted is the nose here. Okay, the same here, for example. A brush stroke here, a brush stroke here. Look at the photograph. You're going to see some kind of triangular triangular shape here okay that's created by the shadow okay and that means that I mean I it's just not laying down the the lighter color I'm always trying to draw you know uh, since this is a no, uh, it's not linear, obviously drawing. There's no line. It's just about values and shapes. Shall be saying raw umber is a must have. Oh, uh, no, not all the time, you know. Uh, lately, I've been I've been working with raw umber, like for the last maybe twenty minute, twenty videos, twenty live streams. But I have more than a hundred or almost two hundred videos on my YouTube channel, and most of them, on uh, uh, on most most of them, I didn't use raw umber. Uh, it's just like uh, uh, I'm falling in love with one color and start using that color until I got bored and I change it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, the thing is that we need, you know, at least primary colors. And the good thing about painting a portrait that we can get away with a nice painting even using just red and uh, yellow ochre, you know obviously plus black and white okay. mm
I need to grade down this color a little bit more. If it's too colorful, I won't see, you know, the pinky color here or a little bit orangey. The base, uh, this is, let's say, this base color, it has to be a little bit grayed down. A tiny bit. You control that depending on what you want. You know, kind of having, we all should have a little bit of, uh, you know, what can you call it, a plan? Yeah. It's kind of difficult to have one because, you know, dealing with oil paint, nothing is so precise like, like, um, um, like getting the same mixtures all the time, every time. Yeah, but we got something pretty close and I think we can work with that. Okay, uh, things that we should learn by memory, for example, I can add a lot of lighter color here. That's the cheekbone. There's going to be light always here. There's going to be light here. There's going to be light here. Okay. I'm not afraid that I make a mistake. If I got to change something, I got to maybe make, make this lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, reddish, you know, orangey. But I'm not going to change that value. Now, one thing that I shouldn't do is go with this value all the way to the edge. Why? Because I know the face is something around it. The color it change, the value and color change as it goes to the sides of the face. Okay. You're always saying I like using burnt sienna with portraits. That yeah, is pretty good, yeah. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description box. You can get there, you can, you know, paint along with me, with a small group of people, Sundays and Tuesdays. You can, you know, watch, I just watch the recorded lessons. There is kind of more than 200, almost 300. Maybe more, I didn't count them. Count them. You can join uh, from as low as $4 per month and we paint Saturdays. Uh, we, for, I mean, we don't paint portrait Saturdays, we paint landscapes, still lives. Another thing that I consider important about my patron, you know, is the critique sessions. We have every Friday a critique session. It's pretty nice, you know, that's the best way to improve. You know, that, you know, we, I know that, you know, we could be pretty sensitive about being critique, but for sure, 
if nobody points out our mistakes, we can just keep repeating them for a long time. You know, it makes easier and faster just to correct mistakes and improve. Out this eye here a little bit. Do you notice the eye is too big yet? I just I need just to get closer just slowly. Okay, maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the eye to the okay, let me see. A little bit up. Mm. on the eye. Mm. I don't see her face yet. I need the eye. Yeah. What is your main advice to begin painting portraits? difficult mm, I don't know join my patron account <laughs> you know this is a, uh, what I could say is that this is a slow we gotta be aware that this is really a slow a slow process Okay, it requires a lot of time, a lot of repetition, 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 okay? It's not like we're gonna listen new information every time. It's just the same information that is, uh, it needs repetition to sink in, you know? And uh, always draw, you know, because when we draw, we control values we got used to because we don't have color. Okay, and uh, proportions, things that we need to learn by heart, few things. For example, I keep mentioning at the beginning always proportions, you know, the measurements. That's something that we need to learn by heart. We don't need to think even, even think about those things. We got to repeat them to the point that they become, you know, second nature. About mixing colors, it's the same. We got some kind of, let's say, formula to simplify mixing colors because we cannot deal with mixing colors, drawing, trying to get the likeness, proportions, and all of that at the same time. It's by repetition that a lot of the things start just uh, functioning or working on the second plane of, you know, in our brains. That's what we call second nature. Yeah? And in, uh, with repetition, everything started looking kind of easier. No, no, there's nothing easier about painting portraits, but let's say that we start even notice that we paint a little bit faster. That's not a goal, okay? Never is a goal paint 
paint faster. The goal is getting away with a nice painting, following all those rules about proportions, about values, about color. You know, it's not about getting away with a nice painting. And for me, is is this is my personal, let's say, training, practice. Uh, the same that uh, the same way that I'm teaching something. I'm practicing. Yeah. Sometimes I get away with a nice painting in these three hours that I used to spend here. Sometimes I don't. Hey, that's okay, you know? That's okay. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna work on the eye. SG is asking me, everyone recommends A La Prima 2 by Richard Schmidt. Yeah, yeah, that's a very really nice, a nice uh, book. Here my saying, hello teacher, when is the class in Spanish? Yeah, next week on my YouTube, on my Spanish channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I think you can get all you need from that book. It's just like, uh, just like I said, you know, it's not like we're gonna find new information in different books. It's just the same information, but the way that the author explained it is that you know what, what we what we are looking for because we don't understand all the people the same way. Yeah. That's why, for example, when I was a student, you know, uh, I understood particular one teacher. Pretty nice, pretty good. It was for me just like, wow, this guy is pretty clear. And my, for my friends, some of my friends, it was, oh my God, I don't understand this guy. He's, you know, it's kind of confusing. I say, what? For real? For me, it's pretty clear, you know, about this temperature, all those things. And for some of my friends, it was just pretty confusing. But everything is like that, you know. Another book that I always recommend, recommend this book is... Uh, Oh my God, I recommend that book that much that I forgot the name. Oh, it's uh, about color theory. It's, uh, oh, it's about uh, the contrast. I don't remember the name, but the, the, the author is Johannes Eaton. Johannes, just like the sound Eaton, is I-T-T-E-N. Okay. That's pretty good about to exercise to, to you know uh, it's just pretty pretty good. I I have read that book like maybe four or five times and I'm gonna read it again. Yeah. We need to go back to the same information again and again, you know. Every time that I read the book again, it's just like I found, I find, I have found new information. It's just like, oh my God, it's not like that, you know, it's just like, uh, we cannot be a hundred percent focused the first time that we read the book. And obviously, we cannot retain the 100 percent information, we need to read that again. That's why we keep painting a portrait, maybe painting portraits for a year or two years. And we notice that after 40, 50 portraits, hey, we're getting better, I'm getting better. But it was a lot, you know, so it's just, it's what, it's what it takes. It's just like music, art is like that. I tried to learn to play the guitar. Oh my God, I quit. It was, <laughs> I gave up. It was too hard. I didn't have the time. With more time, you know, maybe I'm going to try again now that I have a little bit more time at night. But for sure, uh, we need to, you know, always be aware that the improvement on painting is not gonna happen just in one day, in one week, or a month, and a month on one painting. And there's a lot, of, a lot of of this that 
I don't know what's the name, but that when we, you know, we, we're getting better and then we take two steps back and then one step forward, a lot of that happens when we paint, you know. That's the progress experience. Okay, now I have a uh, place light and shadows here. I want to start again with a little bit color, a little bit of color, okay? Orange and a touch of red. I go here, more red, and I go here on the upper lip. Okay, now what, what I'm doing here, I'm mixing on, on, on my painting. Okay, when I go and I mix, I pick up a little bit of pink and I put it here, I'm mixing on the painting. Okay, and that's uh, that's common when we work on a, just one session. Okay, now let's let's say that I keep this area just like that. Okay, just with pink, uh, the skin color, and I add white to create the light, and just that. I don't know, uh, but you notice a difference between the color here and the color here. Here I can just continue just with pure white until I get the value. I think I think I get the vol the volume there, the shadow and all of that. But here's a little bit more colorful because I got a little bit of orange, yellow, and green. Okay, we want that. We gonna we want a little bit of color always. Okay, I'm gonna pick up raw umber. works can make it darker here I think I'm gonna love to break up the edges a little bit. About to work on the eyes. You notice this eye is bigger than the other. Okay, I'm still adjusting, you know, adjusting the size. Okay, let I uh, need to step back because the, the orange was pretty nice when it was in this half of the face. Now, here, mm, see, beautiful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Just comparing, I'm moving my eyes to, from the photograph to the painting. Now, right now, you know, I lay down color, okay? That's one thing. I like, I'm comparing drawing. I'm comparing the likeness. Okay? I'm checking out the center line of the face, the mouth. Obviously, I see a difference between this half and this half. You know, I got more, a little bit more color here. Uh, but the size of one eye, maybe I gotta move one eye. Yeah? What you notice here, just the problems that I'm facing because I started with half of the face. Anyway, remember, you what you all have to do is just press the like button. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Shelby saying, agree, every day we have to draw and paint. Virtuoso of piano every day, repeat, at, at least, at, athletes, at, I don't know how to pronounce, every day repeat and doing this actually to improve in still life pain. Oh, that's pretty nice. Johnny Mansoleli is asking me, can you talk a little bit about the lighting that you have in the room where you paint and how important it is for the color perception? Yeah, and, uh, okay, as a matter of fact, I have problems with, always with the lighting. I'm not a, an expert about lighting, but what I have here to my left and to my right are those just lights that photographers use. I don't know if everybody has seen those lights and and uh, just uh, just that basically. Not, not a light, uh, just it's a kind of a weak light. But all my light is, let's say, it, uh, how do you say, cool, white, just white. It's not orangey, it's not yellowish. There. Uh, I think I got enough light. And uh, well, another thing, on these lights that I have, they I uh, have some kind of white cloth that soften the light. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's see here. I got this same color to the edge okay that's not possible this is something rounded i got a, i need a different value here a different color here on the edge that's the way that we create the illusion that this is turning okay the same here okay i'm gonna have more red more orange Okay, let's add a little bit of green and white for the light here. Okay, a little bit of green here. It's just chrome green. Okay, I can add orange and white. More orange and white. Pink, just black and white. We need some red and orange to warm up here, the lower eyelid, the same here. A little bit of alizarin green some. pink for the light on the lower eyelid
Mixing Black and Alice Rankinson to make this pretty dark. Again, chrome green and white. I'm gonna put more of this color, you know, uh, on the skin. It's too bright this one. Okay, let's work on the nose. Let's see some comments. Gary is asking me what's the actual size of the portrait. Uh, that would be kind of 8 by 8. Mirelle is asking me, do you use oil on the brush? Uh, no. No. Use oil paint. Okay. Now I need to concentrate on details. Okay. Okay, 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 let's see, let's see the nose. What about the background, do you like it? You know, the only thing that when you have a really bright color, by comparison, kind of knock down all the oranges on my portrait. Okay, if I add blue, let's say, blue is gonna enhance all the orangey colors on my portrait. Okay, that's the dilemma okay the only thing about the likeness I think I'm getting there slowly slowly If I go back to the blue on the background, just thinking. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop thinking about. Uh, 
about color I need to think about the drawing you know I see proportions I think that I'm getting closer with the likeness but it's not perfect I need to I need to focus a little bit more on on, on the features I'm concentrating concentrated on mid tones. Uh, Spurring history, what about adding a touch of orange on the face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right now, right now, what, what I'm doing is trying to get uh, the drawing and the volume because, for example, I have some issues with um, you know this half of the face. I think I have to narrow it, you know, and the same here this portion here okay it's something that I gotta do and it's about volume
No, for me, what works is a switch. Like when I think about color, I think about color. Okay. And, and then I stop thinking about color and I think about just drawing. Okay. Proportions. What I need to do. Which. What I got what, what to change. Okay. Move one eye a little bit up. Down. You know. Those things are kind of difficult to, to say because I rely obviously on proportions and but the only thing that get closer on likeness is about observation comparison compare a lot yeah. Yeah. okay I'm, I'm gonna work a little bit on the hair just a little bit. see a little bit of light in there okay let's go back to uh, to the face I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in for to show the colors more clearly. Okay. Now let's work on one eye. Girl saying is the left eye a little bit more blue? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah maybe. Since uh, you know, I, uh, I mixed. I didn't use the same mixture when I painted both eyes. One was, was different. Yeah, pretty sure I got something different there. And yeah, I'm gonna go over that. again I was on the nose yeah I want to try to get the shape of the nose shadow uh, reflect the light here yeah. reflect the light here from the eyes oh, let's see mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.
Something is not okay about the eyes. Paying attention to subtle changes, you know, on, on the values. that helps with the eye. Stepping back, um, yeah, I think I'm getting the eyes a little bit closer. Notice that this eyebrow is a little bit up, kind of pointing up with this one. Mm -hmm. What 
about the nose? It looks like I gotta move the nose to the left. Not so sure, maybe just about the lights. See what about the shape of the face? Okay, I see a shadow. As soon as I squinted down my face, I saw there is a shadow here. The cast shadow from the nose. Mm -hmm. Back. Mm. Do you think the do you think maybe the mouth is tinted different? We gotta move this up here. Yeah, I think that a little bit up uh, here too, a little bit up. And always softening the corner of the mouth, the upper portion of the lip. Okay. Okay, let's see some details. <laughs> Shelby says it's telling me it's a commission or you supported no I just paint what I want here on my YouTube channel a few times I have painted some commissions here on a live stream mm. yeah. Uh, it may say perhaps perhaps the right side of the face is slightly thinner. Okay, okay. I'm gonna check on that. I'm going to mm, let's see, add more light to the face. Just gonna mix white, a little bit of chrome yellow.
I'm gonna mix white and a little bit of yellow, camion yellow. Oh, I noticed something about on the on the face. I go right this. Uh, hello, Mary. I'm going to use uh, this brush double zero. This, this one is kind of a different. This is pretty pointy, and this is just, I don't know if you can see it, looks like a mop brush. Okay, and I just this like a, let's say, kind of dubbing. Okay. I pick up, for example, orange, and I go here, and I do something like this. Like I'm just uh, blending, and at the same time changing the color a little bit. Okay, and I can go back to my regular brush. This pointy one to change some colors. To sorry, not change colors. So to add. Uh, working 
painting and kind of drawing yeah? because it's pretty pointy okay let's place lay down some highlights here Remember, I, we used to challenge ourselves when I was a student. Some a few times, you know, like painting portraits. We pick up, uh, let's say, one of my friends, you know, and between three or four of us, we paint. You know, we paint her or him. For we usually paint for an hour. Okay, there's not too much that we can do in an hour. By the way, we were just pretty happy to try. Okay, lower lip, I think I have to make it a little bit thicker, move it a little bit down, yeah, I think that's better. I'm going to use pure cameo red with a touch of alizarin crimson, just in the middle between the lips, just to try to paint the cast shadow, you know, because the upper lip is casting a shadow on the lower lip. just pure red okay, obviously everything is wet here it's kind of the pure wet you know vanish on this color we don't see like print things you know but it's, it's there Let's see, time, two hours, 50 minutes, you know, I have plenty of time to try to get her face, the likeness. Yeah, okay. Stepping back, I think I, I got the expression, you know, but definitely I see the face and it's not, it's, I don't, you know, I got the expression on the eyes, a little bit, let's say, on the, the expression, but no, it's not perfect. Yeah. Okay, I just have to continue comparing, comparing, and try to find what is wrong. Okay, in a few minutes I'm going to use Photoshop to compare, you know, my painting and the photograph. I'm moving the, the iris a little bit to the right, I just adding, you know, a little bit of, a little bit more paint. Let's see. Oh, here's my wife, Marilou. Uh, be careful of the proportions, of the proportion of the mouth. Okay, thank you. Uh. <laughs> Shelby saying, I think the photo looks like she's tired and spent time in the city at, and the painting, and she's going back for the health cure, cure at the countryside. <laughs> Uh, what time is in Peru? Uh, here is 5.21 mm. uh. Ok I move the eye I need to go darker around the iris here
it needs more or on the Drink water is telling me, can you compare painting to photo Photoshop? Yeah, I will. What about shadow of nose? Okay, I'm gonna check out. check out not compare the photograph and the painting on Photoshop in just a few minutes the next 10 minutes Painting with my eyes, you know, squinted down, comparing as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of shadow here, it has to be a little bit darker and a little bit greenish. One second, I'm gonna move one of my lights. I need more light here. Squinting down my eyes. Okay, let's see. I see a little bit of light going down here. This light it has to be darker. Okay, I need to darken up this. I need to move the light a little bit down here. Oops, I got some orange on my brush. A little more light here. A little bit of green. I 
get the the volume here but that's what it takes you know go back and forth all the time go back and forth until you get it okay uh, okay I uh, need more light here kind of to open the face okay, here Oh, somebody mentioned the shadow below the nose. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate the critiques. Yeah. It's just like I don't follow all of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, a little bit more dark here. Yeah. Okay, a little bit darker here, reddish here and here. Check out the comments. Hello, Larry. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, nothing. Uh, okay, okay. Shades are darker on the photo. Okay. Hello, Marina. Uh, oh, the face is a little bit thinner. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna check on that. You know, I having. I was having a doubt about that. About if the face is, uh, you know, maybe wider or narrower. Uh, that was one of the difficult things to capture. Uh, yeah, maybe it just uh, it's just about the shadows. Okay, one thing is for sure, the lights and the shadows can create the illusion that the face is thinner or wider, yeah. or skinnier. Okay, you gotta pay attention to that. and closer with the eyes, the expression, I mean, okay, it's 
kind of sadness on her eyes. What I'm having problems on is on the shape of the face. The nose, I think, is there, maybe a little bit narrower. Mm. shadow on this side of the face it could be about shadow just make this darker Okay, I'm going to use Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. What about what about gap between nose and upper lip? Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't work on that area. Oh, wow. I was, you know, I didn't even touch it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to work a little bit on that. Yeah, a bit more light here. Uh, there is always a, a reflected light. That's kind of difficult to capture that. That's pretty, pretty. Okay, two things that happen that we gotta just pay attention on the lip, the upper lip. Uh, the upper lip is going to cast a shadow on top of the lower lip, okay? That means this just it's not just a dark line in the middle. This this dark line and the cast shadow. And another thing that's going to be a reflected light. Why? Because it's, imagine that you just what you see is two objects touching. And when that happens, when they are pretty close, one is going to you know bounce up, up back up. Uh, some light and we're gonna see a little bit of that reflected light it's kind of difficult to, to to paint that but I'm trying just to add a little bit of that People ask me if I keep the videos here. Yeah, I keep the videos on YouTube. They are here for free. You can just go back and watch them and paint along with them. And if you uh, somebody has an Instagram account, you can just tag me to see the paintings. You don't have to, you know. 
stuck in my bed. It's nice. I just like to watch some paints. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pick up OBS here and I'm gonna capture my screen. Okay, I open Photoshop, I create uh, a canvas here. I paste it, paste the photograph. That's not good, that's not good. Okay, I gotta, I gotta capture again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, here's Photoshop. What I'm gonna do is make the photograph here on my left a little bit bigger. have a good quality but anyway I'm gonna move it to the right there or to the left I think to the left okay now oh, oops I'm gonna flip Photograph, okay, the paint. Okay, now I can see more clearly uh, some mistakes on my painting. Hmm. Another thing that I want to do is speaking about just color, I would love to change the color on the background. What about if I add some blue? I want to think about it for a minute. Okay, let's see. Oh, first, it's tilted. No, but not for sure that the mistake is here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna add more shadow here to make the face thinner on that side. The mouth, I think I got it, a few things to fix. The nose, a little bit narrower. Yeah, I think I got the eyes. Yeah, not perfect, but I think I got the eyes. Yeah, kind of close on the expression, but it doesn't look like hair, you know. It's just like, it's, it's just like, it's closer, but it doesn't look like hair, you know. It, it looks like a different actress. <laughs> <laughs> this actress, like, I remember this actress, like, uh, from this uh, series, Wonder Woman. What's the name of the actress? Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to fix it. Okay. Let's see, I see one side of the face here. Mistake. I'm going to read some comments. Maybe somebody's just... Ching more square maybe okay that's good. Uh, okay, what is the chain? Yeah, yeah, yeah here here is too pointy. Yeah, on the mouth here on the mouth. Yeah, I got something I gotta fix. Shadow here is too dark. It's too shadow here. Okay. I'm uh, flipping the photograph, and it, here when I see this view, I need to add more light here. 
or Mickey Warrior. Yeah, Mickey Warrior, maybe the, the edge. Definitely more shadow here. Shadow here. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the painting. Uh, what about the, the blue? Mm. I think I like it orange. Yeah. Okay, go back to the painting. Okay, I know a few things that I got correct, but I'm happy with the painting, okay? I can just in, end up the live stream now and I'm happy with my painting. But like everybody, you know, we, gotta, if we have a little bit of time, uh, I'm gonna get more, I'm gonna get to know, I'm gonna make, if, uh, you're gonna get closer. Uh, things uh, it's just like uh, I see her face and then the next minute I see a different person. Yeah, that's kind of tricky, you know? It's just that the feeling, I mean, we all people that, we all the paint portraits, we have the same feeling. It's, you know, it's just like chasing something that is it's kind of, we're feeling that's pretty close. We're about to grab it and then woof, we lost it. But that's that's the process, okay? That's normal. That's something that we gotta just get used to deal with, and we gotta em embrace it and accept it, and enjoy it. <laughs> I'll read the comments in, in a minute. I'm just curious about uh, to read some suggestions. Okay, here, yeah, here's the, the thing that maybe is gonna change the face more than anything. I mean, I don't think so, but <laughs> anyway. Okay.
Sí. Bottom of the nose, okay. Thank you. Should be. Garu is telling me, should be the painting more beautiful? Don't try to be too close to the photo, please. This is a sense of painting to be different than the photo. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get closer. <laughs> Uh, Shelby saying, never mind, it's just different. No, I wanna get, I wanna get closer. <laughs> I just came, you know. I'm painting so many portraits. I know that some of them I, I get closer and some of them I don't. That's okay. But anyway, I mean, uh, it's it's an it's a good exercise. If somebody, it's, if even if somebody's just pointing out some mistakes, on the comments, you're. You're, you're doing the exercise too, you know, because you're trying to capture, you're, you're comparing, trying to see what's, what's the thing that's missing. That's good. That's good. That's good. A critique is always good, you know, because you got to train your observation. It's not just, uh, you know, like, hey, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's not, sim it's not as simple as saying, I don't know. It's just trying to see. find a mistake, what is wrong. Yeah. The shadow here, for example, is more curvy. It was kind of flat. I'm going to pick up a fan brush to paint the hair. Oh, oh yeah, oh, he's telling me, he's telling me, right, so I just noticed the upper left forehead is more pronounced. Okay, okay, I'm going to check out that. Sherry is saying the shadow over the right jawline is still not dark enough. The face is too full. Okay, the shadow over the right jawline line here. Okay, it's not dark enough. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, you mean here or here? I think here, eh? Yeah, I gotta make it darker yet. Yeah, here's not that dark. But, I mean, there's an edge here that has to be darker. Yeah, for sure, you know, in order to create the illusion that this is turning. Yeah, but I think you meant here, but it's not dark enough. By the way, you have the link to the photograph on the description. In this way, you can open up and see it bigger, you know, and compare better. Okay. 
I'm going to paint a little bit of the hair. For this, I use linseed oil, okay, a lot of linseed oil. You see? Okay, and what I do, I go with one side, one corner of the, the fan brush, and I do this. And now, here, one corner. Then I can use it like this. Just there, you know, I, I like this kind of chaos here. I think I'm gonna keep it like that. If I add a little bit of yellow here, okay, let's see. For example, uh, okay, what is Costaria de Tener un poquito distinto? Oh, thank you, Frank. Do I need any previous experience to follow your Patreon classes? Uh, experience like like a lot, you know, like it's just like usually people that are on my lessons, some of them has experience, some of them don't, you know, they want to practice, learn, and we, at some point, we or, or we were beginners, you know, and that shouldn't stop us just to, but obviously for painting portrait at least we should learn how to mix colors, you know, it's just like I, we like we are just absolute beginners to the point that it's the first time that we're gonna try oil paints. That's gonna be dealing with too much, you know, dealing with material, dealing with proportions. Okay, that's that's a lot. Dealing with the drawing, color, values. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, should we see, for example, different uh, uh, as most of people, but I assume it is because I don't want to change because of one second. Hello? Estoy haciendo un directo en YouTube ahora mismo, no sé. No sé, no sé. Tengo que cortar, chao. Yeah, this, you know, I told him, <laughs> a friend of mine, I told him, okay, I'm going to be on YouTube. And, yeah, and he just doesn't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, thank you for letting, letting, oh, I was reading Shelby. I assume I don't want to change because millions of people are going the same, but not me. Okay, painting gave me the same feelings of freedom. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, uh, okay, I like the dark shadow on the, the chin. Okay, Renzo, is that cut yellow hue you use? Yeah, yeah, that's cadmium yellow. No, no, it's just cadmium yellow. I doesn't have, I don't have anything more on that cadmium yellow.
It's clicking down my eyes. Right now I'm just uh, trying to see if I got some mistakes on some values, like for example, making this a little bit darker. Here a little bit darker. I should make this a little bit rounded here. Pretty happy to have you all here watching me painting. I'm gonna paint maybe for the last 10 more minutes. You are free to go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, saying here, forehead just a little taller, taller. Okay, let me check out, let me check out, let me check out. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, maybe the light here. Yeah, it's a little bit of light here because of, you see a little bit of the skin. Cherishing Linda Carter as Wonder Woman was not as intriguing as this. But it looks like her, yeah? Like Linda Carter. No, she's like uh, from one of the... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, you're saying from one of the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, yeah, she's... Uh, Ferguson? I don't remember her name. Oh, my God. I think it's Ferguson, the last name. Yeah, sorry. Nilo is saying it's perfect, thank you. Yeah. Remember, just press the like button. Okay? If you don't like it, press the dislike button twice. Some highlights on the lip.
right here. I painted this a little bit darker. Now I'm painting and lighting up this. It's just the way it is. We gotta go back and forth. You know. I'm trying to keep it a little bit of color. I'm adding again this light green here, a little bit of that. Gotta soften the eyebrow. I think the lip here in this area was a little bit thicker. Okay. 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 I think that's it for today. It's been three hours. That's you know. I painted like one, once for four hours. Yeah. But I think that's okay. I'm happy with the painting. You know. Yeah. yeah, what else? What else? We're gonna keep the hair just like that. Yeah.
Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Okay. Uh, see you next time. Take care, you all. Stay a minute, okay? <laughs> it's gonna... I'm gonna check out for the last time. Just some touches, some touches. Can you add, I can even add some blue. It's darker, you know, it works pretty good on darker areas. Okay, that's it. See you all next time. Bye. Okay, as soon as I step back, I see things that I gotta fix. Okay, I'm not gonna see anything more. That's it. I'm gonna look for more things. <laughs>